remember uh, some friends of mine, when they hit about 37, they realized that they hadn't done anything in a while in terms of their skills. They had the skills of a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, and they were party guys, and they hit, they're hitting, I remember when they're hitting 36, 37, they realized, oh my God, we're way behind, way behind everybody. Now, from my perspective, I'm much, much older now, in my mid-50s, they were still quite young, and... And I remember meeting with them, and they were they're having emotional breakdowns. It was like three, four of these guys. And uh, I said, "Well, listen, you know, go get a trade, become a developer, become an electrician, become a plumber. You know, you can get up at speed with a plumber, electrician within you know, two, three years. And then you're making a lot of money. You can do a coding within uh, within a year. You can do with coding development. You can do it. Still today, by the way, you can still can. You just got to leverage the modern tools." Anyway, but they, they couldn't get past it emotionally. And to this day, they're still washing floors and stuff. So again, whether you're watching this at 37 or 47, once you get the structure in place for, to earn, uh, you can find yourself on coasting on Easy Street within a few years. It's not super difficult. The biggest challenge, again, is reprogramming that visceral brain, that lower brain. Anyway, let me just quickly jump to the older folks. If you're older, you know, in your late, your late, your 40s and 50s, 60s, even older. What you have, you don't have time, but you do have uh, experience. You do have a fully developed brain. So what you got to do is you got to see how you can leverage both your experience assume that you maybe you're you're a bookkeeper maybe you're an accountant maybe you're an engineer maybe you were in marketing i don't know but you can see how you can leverage your those skills and that experience with development combine them together and you become very valuable can you get a job at that age harder they rather hire people in their 20s and 30s who are who have ability to show but um, I personally always recommend to everybody freelancing to start. That's what I did. That's what I did my entire career. Last time I had a job was a bouncer in a nightclub. You know, that was, that's what I did. Um, I just, uh, it's so freeing. Like they, call it, they call it freelancing because you're free to fail, but you're also free. You have, your life is so much more free. And if you structure your freelancing business properly, uh, within a year, you can start feeling pretty free because as a freelancer, you, you work when you want, how you want, with whom you want, the type of jobs you want. Um, and then you learn to manage your money properly and you'll be in a great position. It's, uh, it's very important. Money management is a huge part of all of this. So next, here it is again, if you just want to see my notoramas. All right. So we, dis we discussed that, leveraging your advantages. You got your youthful, youthful advantage and your uh, advantage with experience. Uh, in both situations, get in shape. Low carb, number one, lots of water, lots of sleep. Try to get to 8,000, 10,000 steps a day. Try to do some muscle building exercises about twice a week. Uh, trust me, your energy levels will go up, your cognitive capability will go up. It's pretty crazy stuff how important it is to get in shape. Now, the next five points here or tips apply to any age. So in the AI age, you got you to use AI. Just like, you don't want to be like me back in the early 90s when I started being a developer where I refused to use the integrated development environment. I thought somehow it was cheating. It was silly of me. I would just use Notepad and write my Java code, and I would compile a Javac and you know, command line. It's, it was done. Hmm. So you want to leverage the AI tools. So you're learning how to code. Let's say you're a beginner. You're learning how to code. I always recommend the web stack because it offers the most amount of flexibility, most variety of development jobs, and it allows you to work for large companies, small companies, medium-sized companies. All kinds of different types of projects, all kinds. Of, it's it's the most opportunity. So that means HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. I would learn PHP if you want to do backend, then do some WordPress. Again, you don't have to be an expert at all of these 
just be knowledgeable about it. To be, you know, you know, you know, you know enough about front end when you can write JavaScript and you understand how to write responsive uh, websites in terms of UI. And then you're, gonna, you're probably going to be using uh, frameworks like um, like Vue, maybe React, uh, Bootstrap. You know. Um, so, anyway, so yeah. In terms of uh, full stack, you should also learn the basics of full stack, no matter what you want to do. Full stack is king for jobs. Yeah, so you want to learn the full stack as well. Again, just the basics. I teach the full stack with PHP, which means also a little bit about databases, but that's it. So all that said, you got 250 hours of work there to get it to get through, at least with my program. You can use whatever program you want. You got to learn AI. AI, you got to consider a stack. You know, you got the web stack, you got native mobile, uh, you got uh, the .NET, you got the Java stack, and then you got to see AI as another stack. So you have to understand the different large language models, whether it be Gemini, Grok, ChatGPT, Claude. And then you got to learn about all the downstream technologies in the AI space. You got various agents, what agents are. Uh, the various hybrid models, you know, understand MCP, understand how these AI tools work, understand how the different AI systems, which ones are good at what, you know, Grok is good at that, and Gemini is good at this, and uh, and uh, ChatGPT is good at that. So, for example, I used AI recently, I talk about this, is two basic examples where I used AI to augment, augment traditional development. I still needed to know what I was doing. Because you can get caught up in these AI doom loops, which is just nuts. Uh, you still need to know what you're doing, but I used AI to speed up traditional development. It's great for reading log files, uh, uh, looking up information that you normally would have to look up with Google or stack, go to Stack Overflow in the day, um, looking at error messages and giving you ideas about what those error messages may indicate that kind of stuff, telling you where you might find config files in the directory structures of some applications you may be leveraging for your web apps. These are all very useful tools for AI. The way I use AI is for those finite applications. So I took, for example, debugging a server bug. I took it down a server web, excuse me, a web app bug. I took two hours of work. I took it down to like five minutes, maybe 10. Um, because the AI just made the job super easy. It was able to read log files like this. It was able to tell me where the I and I was. I even had it write a bunch of HT access rules for me. It was good. Where you trip up with AI today, I'm recording this late November 2025, where AI trips up today is in, uh, if you try to tell it, you try to vibe code a whole thing. You, you might get something that works, but it's going to be a mess under the hood. And anybody knows, you got any software if it's any somewhat successful in any way, you're going to need to be able to update it and tweak it. And, and generated code, whether it be AI or not, are notoriously bad for that situation. Notoriously bad. So yeah, le leverage AI to learn coding, leverage AI to software development. So you can do AI augmented traditional development. You could do the other type of thing you could use AI for is AI first development. That is my fitness coach. I developed a fitness coach. It took me about three and a half months. The way you train an AI, AI first application, it's, you, you know, these days it's delivered via chatbot a lot of times as mine is. And uh, you give it a, a framework. So I gave it a framework. Okay, you are trained on the fitness over 50 program. And these are the rules of the program. This is how you got to think about it. it's keto first. It's uh, pulsing techniques, et cetera, and so on. And then you run through it, and the AI is kind of like, it will go off on these crazy tangents, like my fingers, right? It will go, it will go off on the, so you have to control it. So when, it, when the finger starts pointing, going where it's not supposed to go, you got to go, don't do that. Keep your fingers where they, keep your fingers where they got to be. That's what you got to do with AI. The AIs will go off on these crazy tangents, so you have to control it. Um, I call that uh, edge case mitigation. That's my nerd term for it. Anyway, so a little side note. You know how uh, 
uh, people will try to sound more uh, knowledgeable. They'll use big words. If they use big words, if they use $10 words when they could have used $1 words, when they use $10 words unnecessarily, sometimes you have to use the fancy words to get to the point more uh, quickly. But when people oftentimes, when they want to sound like they know what they're talking about, they will use the big words on purpose. So people are pros at it. They'll go on these, these long-winded uh, s uh, paragraphs to describe something that could be said in you know, one or two lines. Anyway, that's just me. All right, so um, leverage AI to augment the development uh, processes, both uh, AI-first applications and augmented traditional, traditional development via AI. Also use AI to... Um, to, to speed up the learning. You want to speed up the learning as well. So AI can speed up the learning. Oh my God, it's a long, it's a long conversation here. That was the old goals.